Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. And so we're, now we're moving into 2017. Obviously, we're here last night at midnight. We moved into a new calendar year. And um, so this morning, we want to uh, discuss or share, and, and I'm going to have fun. My iPad, uh, apparently, something happened to it overnight. Just the, uh, it was fully charged last night, got it this morning, it's dead, it will not take a charge, don't know what it is. Um, it don't, that don't sound good. Can you go see if it did anything? I don't think it did anything, but, huh? It's not that old, it's only three years old. So may, maybe they could put a new battery in it or something, if that's what it is, I don't know if they, they can do that or not. They can? Is it expensive? Cost me? Huh? How much will it cost me? A couple of hundred? Yeah, but there's $650 for a new one. I got the 64 gig. Yeah, it's an expensive little rascal. I do not like Android. I do not like Android. I tried Android. It's, it's, it's of the devil. That's right. It's, it's right. You know why? Because it's Microsoft-based. It's from the evil empire. Oh, it's Linux-based. Well, I still hate it. I tried to use my... A relative's uh, Android-based phone the other day, I'm like, I'm going to throw it through the window. <laughs> Is there a way to turn off the uh, thing going to sleep? Huh? Yeah. Turn my thing off so it won't go to sleep. I, I won't keep my notes up. So what we're going to talk about this morning, I know we're, we're, we're running late. <laughs> huh? I don't know how to turn that, the, uh, the sleep feature off real quick. It's easy on Android. Okay. All right. This morning, we, you know, we, we came through 2016. Everybody said, thank God we came through 2016. Went through a horrible election cycle. It was one of the, I mean, one of the most vindictive, hateful, I mean, everywhere you turn, disgusting, uh, underhanded, me, media-driven um, so I won't turn it off. Okay. Um, maybe. Since I wasn't there for that, I don't really know. I had to study my history. Um, cycle. It wearied people. It split people up. It turned people against people. Uh, turned church people against church people. And um, uh, my, my position is always this. It, as Christians, we, have, we, we cannot just do stuff that's going to be economically good for us. We trust the Lord. We cannot support abortion homosexuality, e evil and more immoral sins. We cannot support that as a Christian. You cannot. Abortion alone is a scourge on our nation. It is ungodly. It is of the devil. It is the, it is the murder of the ones who have not come out of the womb. And I'm going to tell you, you know, if we took those babies, and they're already talking about doing this, post-birth abortion. So there's already countries discussing it. That a baby is born, they find there's some kind of birth defect in it, and within a certain period of time, the first year or whatever, they can kill the baby. They can euthanize the baby. Yes. Yeah. It's evil. Oh, it's working. It's charging. Well, that's, this is a good sign. Okay. So, we are the church. Say, we are the church. We have to be a voice in the earth. And so we're going to talk about this morning three things. Vision, covenant, and we're going to receive communion. Okay? Abortion is a scourge on our nation. Let me say this. It is the offspring. It is the offspring of the 60s radical, ungodly, Free sex mindset, anti-Jesus, anti-establishment, and it has just been continuing to perpetuate. Okay? Let's look now at vision. Deuteronomy chapter 31. Look over there with me, if you will. Deuteronomy 
Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 9. It says, And Moses wrote this law and delivered it to the priests, the sons of Levi, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and unto all the elders of Israel. And Moses commanded them, saying, At the end of every seven years, in the solemnity of the year of release and the Feast of Tabernacles, that's every seven years they had the, you had the year of uh, uh, Tabernacles, and every seven, seven years, every 49 years, they had the, they had the year of Jubilee. Okay, the 50th year after, after the year after the seventh cycle of sevens was the year of Jubilee, where everything was restored, everybody got everything back, you know, got your car back, got your wife back, got your three dogs back, got your kids back. Okay, it's like a country song. Okay, play backwards. When all of Israel has come to appear before the Lord thy God, and that uh, the place which he shall choose, thou shalt read the law before all Israel in their hearing. So in other words, every seven years, the whole nation was to come together and hear the law read again. It was a time of remembrance, or reminding. And so, um, gather the people together, men and women and children, and thy stranger that is within thy gates, that they may hear, that they may learn, and fear the Lord your God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, I, missed, I just jumped and missed the whole place. Hallelujah. Gather the, people, the, the, the strangers within thy gates, that they may hear, and that they may learn and fear the Lord thy God, and observe to do all the words of this law. And that their children which have not known anything. In other words, the reminder was also that so the kids could hear it for the first time. Are you here? See, we, we a lot of times get to where we've got it and we forget to pass it on. The thing that, that inspired us and the thing that moved us and the thing that, that brought us, we don't pass on. We have to pass it on. Can you say Amen. That their children have not known anything may hear and learn to fear the Lord the God. And as, and, and as long as ye live in the land, whether you go over Jordan to possess it. So what, what, what do we have here? It was every seven years they would, be, they would come and be reminded of what God said. They, were being, so they read the whole law, brought everybody in, sat them all down and read the whole thing. Now, it was a reminder. That took a while, didn't it? It was a reminder to all those who already heard it. But it was an introduction to those who never had. And so when we come and we talk about vision and we talk about purpose, you know, we, we have to be reminded of why, why we're here, what we're here for, what we're doing. Now this morning, I'm going to do a little t different take on vision. I'm not going to talk about as, as much about what Faith and Victory here is, church is here to do. Okay? Because I think this morning we need, to, we need to focus on something that's more important than what we as a church body is here to do. Because until we get the church doing what they are supposed to do, it's going to be hard for the church to do what the church is supposed to do. Why are we here? You're not here to come to church. Your purpose as a believer is not to come to Faith and Victory Church. That's not your calling in life. Now, maybe where God's planted you to grow and to do things, but it's not what you, you are not here simply to be a member of this church. Okay? Look with me, if you will, um, uh, over into Matthew 28. Because I'm going to tell you, your very, your very first purpose and calling is to make disciples. Not Pastor Ed, you. You are a disciple maker. Say, I am a disciple maker. Now, when I start talking about making disciples, we're going to, we're going to talk about some specifics here along this line that we're not talking about uh, uh, you having your own, you know, ministry. You know, you having a traveling ministry. You having your own whatever. We're talking about as an individual believer, you are to make disciples out of men and women. Those other, those, those other things are things that happen and God calls us to and God establishes. But as an individual believer, we are to make disciples of men and women. Hello. Jesus said in Matthew 28, 18, verse, through, through, verse 20, Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power, all exousia, all authority is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Now, other trans, every other translation I looked up, Amplified, NIV, ASV, RSV, Weymouth, Weiss, they all said this, go, make, go teach and make disciples of all nations. We are called to you know, uh, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, 
teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto, always, even unto the end of the world. Now, Jesus tells us, he gets over in Matthew 28, and he's got his disciples, and said, you're going to go make disciples. And in discipling, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to teach them what I commanded you. Can somebody say amen? You are to teach them what I commanded you. You're to teach them how to walk in love. You're to teach them how to be submitted to the Father. You're to teach them, listen, we're going to go get people saved and then begin to teach them. Hello? Hello? I would suggest you move a little bit from that. Is she covered in, in, in antibacterial soap stuff? We, listen, this is not, we think it is the job of the pastor to do all the work. And in reality, it is your job to go make disciples of all men. You are to be out winning the lost, making disciples, bringing them in and making them a functioning part in the local church because you're discipling them. Now, I say discipling them, they're not, you're not their pastor. Hello? But you, you, can, you, have been, you have sat under ministry, you sat under the Word, and you sat under teaching that empowers you to teach them the fundamental doctrines of Christ. What it means to be a believer. When they come to you and say, should I be drinking? You shouldn't go, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of worried about... No, no! Should I be sleeping with my girlfriend and we're not married? You know, you shouldn't wonder. No, you should know what the scriptures are. You should be able to answer their question with biblical answers. You've sat under the word long enough? Hello? I want to teach them to cast out devils. Wait, 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 wait. Get them established. Let them know what a devil is first. Teach them what the word of God says. Jesus didn't get them the first day and send them out. His commissions came a little bit later after they had been with him and, and, and been discipled to a certain degree. Then he got to go out and cast out devils. He didn't put them out there day one casting out devils. You've got ministries in this country right now that are taking people and bringing them in, and they're taking them out on the streets, teaching them to prophesy to people. They just walk up to strangers, and the Lord shows me this, and then they begin to prophesy. You. Come on now. They're divided severally as the Spirit wills. If the Spirit has a word for somebody, that's fine. But we're, we're, you know, we're, turning, we're turning people loose with, with, a, with a cannon, and they think it's a BB gun. Because you can mess people up. If you don't really know it's the Holy Ghost, you can... Well, how are they going to know it's the Holy Ghost? They've got to be discipled to know the Word of God first. Until they know what the Word says, they can't really judge what the Spirit If you can't know what the Word is, you can't really won't know what the Spirit's saying. Why? Because the Spirit and the Word agree. And even, you go back and listen to Dad Hagen, and the, the Spirit of God was speaking to him while he's on the bed of affliction, and the Spirit of God said, gave him a word, and he said, where is that? He said, he, 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 no, he, he said, who said that? Because he said it was like an audible voice. He said, who said that? And the Holy Spirit gave him the verse reference. He went and looked it up, and there it was in the Bible. See, the Spirit and the Word always agree. So we, we got to disciple people in the Word. The fundamental doctrines of Christ, what it means to be a believer. What does it mean to be a believer? Amen? You know, what happened in the new birth? You, everyone in this room, is, you, you've heard enough Bible along that line. You could sit down with somebody, and you, could get, you, you need to study, and you'd be ready. You could teach somebody what it means to be a born-again believer. And you need to be doing it. Where'd you get that stuff from? Well, come to my church. We bring them into the church. They need to be in the church. But you've got, you know, Pastor, I can't take everybody you bring in here and disciple them. Amen. And the sermons I'm going to preach, a lot of them are going to be, you know, some of the Sunday mornings are going to be inspirational. They're going to be corrective. They're going to be this. You know, you're not going to get all the discipling you need from the pulpit every week in the time frame they need it. There's, there's not, a, there, you know, a lot of churches start to do believers class. We start all kinds of classes. We don't have a building. Your living room is going to be the classroom Amen. or their living room. You've got to go make disciples of them. That went over big. You've got to teach what the Word of God says about being filled with the Holy Spirit. Now listen, 
you don't need to start off trying to teach them how to prophesy. Just get them filled with the Spirit first. Amen. Show what it means that the Bible, that speaking in tongues and praying in the Spirit is, is a biblical practice. You don't have to have them out there, you know, well, the Lord says this. You know, listen, I'm going to tell you something. You teach them the fundamentals, and then God can take over from some places. Nobody told me how to prophesy. I remember the first time I gave a, I gave a tongue and interpretation. It was at the Piney Grove camp meeting outside Piney Grove, North Carolina. That's outside between Greenville and Chocowinity, North Carolina. That's where Laverne Tripp got saved. At the Piney Grove, it's the Pentecostal Holiness, um, it's the Pentecostal Holiness uh, uh, campground. Well, it's not even a campground. It's just a meeting place. They, they met uh, every so often. And uh, Now, Larry, when you got to leave, I know you're not mad with me. We'll get this on the... On the I, actually, I got three others to get out there. Yep. Brother, but my, my computer monitor died. I got to get it replaced on my desktop, which I was going to use to send, upload the stuff to Bill. I went the other day, and it was like... Oh, I checked all the... Pl I checked it all. That was what this was. Then I climbed down and plugged it in the wall, and... I'm like, oh, yeah, oh, 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 no, no, no. The light on the monitor wouldn't come on. It wasn't even, even in sleep mode. It was gone. All right. And so we, we as believers, our purpose as believers is to disciple, uh, win people to Jesus and make disciples of them. And you, you, we could grow the church by you discipling people and bringing them into the church. And Pastor Ed could preach an inspirational service on Sunday morning. If you're not coming on Wednesday nights, you need to get your back in out of your chair and get down here. Because that's the people who've been coming. It's been amazing. I said, it's been amazing. The last four, three, four services have just been over the top. Okay, on a Wednesday night service. You know, well, I, I don't want to get on. You need to come. Because we're going to do more teaching on Wednesday. We're going to trust the Spirit of God to be more inspirational or whatever on Sunday morning. I'm not, I'm not limiting us. I don't want to limit God in anything. But that's kind of what our focus it seems to be. I'm being led to be more of our focus. Wednesday night's going to be our, our, our teaching time. We're going to trust God for moves of the Spirit and manifestations of the Holy Ghost and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So number one, I'm not going to get through this this morning. Bye, Larry. Bye, Julie. They, he, told me, he told me ahead of time, I got to leave. I'm not mad with you. God will get you for leaving the service mad. I'm messing, Larry. Hallelujah. He told me ahead of time. Okay, so number one, you got to make disciples. We got to be disciple makers. You have in you deposits of revelation and the word of God that you've been taught and you sat under. And, you know, you, I'm looking for my ministry. I got, I got news for you. You've already got one. I said, you've already got one. Take people, win them to Jesus. Start teaching them fundamental things. How to be, what it means to be born again. What it means to be filled with the Spirit. What it means to be righteous. What it means to live right before God. Put off the flesh. Yeah. People don't want to talk about that. You know? Do, do, I, do I need to go to church? Yeah. Do I need to stop smoking dope? Yeah. You know? What do I do? I'm living with my girlfriend. We're, we're, you know, we can't afford to separate. Get your back in on the couch. And stay out of her bed. And keep her off your couch. Now either get married or get out of the house. Hello? People don't want, a guy a couple came to the church one time. They were living together. I said, what do we do? I said, well, they said, we can't afford to separate. I said, you get on the couch. You better not go in that bedroom. I said, hey, you need to get married. Are you, you love her? Yep. You want to get married? Well, we really hadn't talked about it. Well, you need to make a choice. Because either you need to get married and move out or they got married. Quick. I guess they like sleeping in the same bed. Hello? Well, praise the Lord. <laughs> got them married. Yeah. I don't mean you're living together. You, you see, well, there are things you can disciple people in that you, Pastor Ed don't have to get up and preach about every week. Hello? I can't preach the new birth, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, who it means, means righteous. You know, all the things we need to preach 
in the time frame that new people are coming in, they need to hear it. And they might be another year to get, till they get to hear it again. So you've got to disciple them. Secondly, what, what is the other thing? that we, What is our purpose as believers? Number one, we're to make disciples. Number two, we're to do the works of Jesus. Jesus said in John 14, 12, Verily, verily, I say to you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater than these, because I go unto the Father. You need to be a Jesus-like individual in the earth. Did you know they called them, at Antioch, they first called them Christians? The word Christian means two things. You can translate it two ways. Little Christ or Christ-like. But the fact of the matter is, they didn't call themselves Christians. They were called Christians by the residents of that area. When they came and preached Christ, they said, you act so much like the one you preach. And they called them Christ-like or little christ plural. We're to be doing the works that Jesus did. We're to be preaching. We're to be teaching. We're to be laying hands on the sick. We're to be casting out devils. We're to be going out and doing the work of God. Without a bunch of fanfare. Amen? We're just to be doing it. It's supposed to be second nature to us. We're to be, we are to be the hands, we are the body of Christ. We're to be the hands of Christ extended in the earth. You have a mission and you have a calling. Well, I want to travel in ministry and I want to sell books and tapes. Forget it. Can I tell you, can I give you a secret? If you ain't called, you don't want it. If you ain't called, you don't want it. There, there is grace that goes to enable people to stand in places to deal with the stuff that you, nobody can deal with. They can't deal with themselves without the grace to do it. You don't want to be a pastor if you're not a pastor. Sheesh. There are days you kind of wonder what it's like to be a traveling ministry. You know what I'm saying? But see, you're grace, you're grace for whatever God calls you to. And if you're not graced for that, if, in other words, if there is not a grace on your life to empower you to stand there, you don't want it. You'd be like that pastor who got up one morning and, and he was in bed, and his wife came and said, Honey, you got to get ready for church. He said, I don't want to. She said, But you got to. He said, I don't want to. She said, Get out of bed. You got to go to church. He pulled the covers up over his head and said, I, am, I don't want to go. She said, Why? She said, The people there don't like me, and I don't like them. He said, and so he, he finally got frustrated with his wife and said, Give me one good reason. I've got to go to church. She said, You're the pastor? See, if you're not graced, to stand in a place you don't want it. But we are all graced, as it were, to do the works of Jesus. We're all graced to go and minister to people. Hello? We're all called and anointed by the Spirit of God to go minister to people, to preach the gospel to them, to lay hands on them, to give them truth, to help them out. Every believer is. The Bible says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Didn't say it's not going to follow the apostles. Didn't say it would follow the pastors. Didn't say it would follow the evangelists. You know, those ministries may have different giftings by the Holy Ghost, but the Word of God says in Mark that these, the signs would follow the believer. Amen. 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 You're going to be doing the works of Jesus. So in 2017, we need to be, number one, we need to be looking at how, what, what I do, need to do to make disciples of people. And can I say this? Don't share your pet doctrines. Don't get in some little meeting and say, well, I, I don't think, you know, um, that minister so-and-so has it right on this. Way. Just give them what the Word says. Amen. If something needs to be addressed, the elders of the church will take care of it. That's the job of the pastor. Are you here? It's the job of the pastor to, to watch over the sheep, and if there's, if there's stuff, he needs to deal with it. That's his job. Just go disciple them. If somebody comes to you and says, what about this teaching? Give what the Word says. Hello? Sometimes I'll, 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 I'll talk about a minister's name if they're, if they're really off, if they're really causing problems. Other times I won't. I'll just make reference to what's being taught. You know, and, and, and Paul did the same thing. Sometimes he would say, there are those, and then I'll place he would actually name them. And I think it had to do with the degree of their deception and what they were doing as to whether or not he did that. Okay? And if, it, if, if, if an individual or a group of people were so dangerous to the body, he would have to warn them about, you stay away from them. Okay? In other cases, you say, look, there's, there's something going on. You just need to 
this, this teaching or whatever is a problem. You know, there are those out there doing this. Just watch out. Okay? But as a discipler, you don't even, don't even mess with that. Just give them what the Word says. Secondly, do the works of Jesus. Third, now I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this. As a believer, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. What? Know you not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. We, I, my old Pentecostal roots are going to come out. <laughs> We need to live a life that exemplifies Jesus Christ, spirit and body. Hello? We cannot live the don't do as I do, do as I say do mindset in the church. We cannot live. It's okay to do whatever you want to do with your body. It doesn't matter. We just need to focus on your spirit. That's Gnosticism. Paul wrote to the church and said, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Now, you handle that body with the same respect and the same uh, de demeanor that God demands of it because it belongs to him. You're, you know, it's not just about you having a good spiritual life. You need to live with your body right. And if you don't, it will affect your spiritual life. So we are to glorify God with our body and our spirit. Why? Because they're God's. They belong to God. So as a believer, what is our mission? Our mission is to make disciples to do the works of Jesus and in our personal conduct that the world can see and those that even at home can see, we glorify God in our spirit and our body and honor the Lord. Now the world will pat you on the back and call you an open-minded Christian if you live below your calling. But the world won't be coming to you when they need a miracle, if that's what you're doing. I got made fun of. I remember when I was working my, my last full-time secular job, I used to get made fun of. Brother. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't a compliment. It was, it was a twang to it. It was, a, it was condescending. It was patronizing. Brother. Your wife ain't saved. Wow, she's wearing pants. Brother. Brother. But I lived what I preached in front of them all the time, even when they made fun of me. And when they had a need, I noticed they didn't go to the other people in the place. They came because I glorify God in my body and my spirit. They came to me to have me lay hands on them to pray for them, be healed of cancer, to be healed of different things. They came to the one they knew walked with God. And it wasn't just I walked around with, you know, going, ooh, in some, you know, monastery guru uh, transcendental meditation chant. It's because I lived it in my body. People are watching you. I said, people are watching you. Hello? Your neighbors are watching you. And if you're throwing stuff through the window of the house, they're not coming over they need a miracle because you're having a fight and you're throwing stuff through the, break the front door, front glasses. Hello? Y'all hear you gone home. All right. So let's move, let's move along. Hallelujah. So first of all, we are to, why are we here? We're here to make disciples. Okay? Second, what we do is we have to have a renewed purpose and, 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 and renewed purpose and then covenant. What's our purpose? What is the Christian life all about? It's all about who, who am I becoming? I am pressing on to know Jesus so I could be like him. I would know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Hello, remember Paul said that. I would, I would know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. So I want to become like him. I want to think like him. See, these are the things we got to start asking ourselves. Am I like him do i think like him do i act like him be imitators of god as dear children and most of all am i living like him now see as charismatic word of faith people we want to run straight to we're living in our, in our rights and privileges as a believer and that's awesome 
but are you also conducting yourself in a way that honors him? You are not your members as servants of unrighteousness. Hello? But as servants of righteousness. What you do with your body. I, 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 I encounter so many people, you know, that they get mad with you when you tell them you've got to walk in love. Because they want to yield to their flesh. They want their flesh to dominate. They want to be able to let their flesh do what their flesh wants to do. You can't let your flesh do what your flesh wants to do. Your flesh is crazy. Your flesh will take you down. Hello? He that soweth to the flesh of shall of the flesh reap corruption. Well, that one ever be. Can I get amen over here from the Melanie and Hallelujah. Jeff crowd? Just a little Praise amen. <laughs> Say amen, Melanie. Amen. All right. See, we, 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 have got to, we have got to understand that we are to ask this question of ourselves. What fruit's on the end of my branches? Amen. You shall know them by their fruit. Hello? What fruit are you bearing? Are you bearing fruit of sin unto corruption or of righteousness unto holiness? Are you living a lifestyle that honors the Lord? Are you trying to get away with as much as you can get away with and still make it in by the skin of your teeth? And let me tell you, you're in trouble there because there's no skin on your teeth. If you're trying to make it in by the skin of your teeth, you is in big trouble. Set some goals. Initiate a plan. The biggest plan you need to have this year individually is I will grow. Amen. What? Into his likeness and image. 2017 holds a new level of glory for this to me. Take the things out of my life that, you know, show me the things that I need to get out of my life so that I can be in the place that I can grow and be a blessing and use, be used of God to make disciples of men, to do the works of Jesus, to glorify you in my spirit and body. Prune me, O oh God. And when you ask God to prune you when it starts happening, don't get mad. Get glad. Amen? Why? Because the end result of that growth is better. Amen? Next, after vision, we recovenant with God. Now, I, I, listen, you understand that you're on fireness. You're making disciples. You're, you're living a life that honors the Lord's spirit and body. It's going to be beneficial to the, the church assembly. See, when you bring that fire in, when you bring that zeal in, when you come together as, as a body, and then God speaks through the pastor or the guest speaker or whoever to the congregation, you're already walking in a place. And we move up higher. Paul got so frustrated, he wrote in, wrote in Hebrews and said, when you, ought to be, when you ought to be teachers, you have need of milk again. I'm wanting to get to a higher place, and you guys are a bunch of bozos living in the flesh. That was Ed Taylor paraphrase version. Okay? When you, had need, when you ought to be teachers, what? When you ought to be making disciples of men, you're having need to be re-discipled yourself. Let us lead, therefore, the, the, the fundamentals or, or the uh, elementary doctrines of Christ. And the things we think are all deep, he called them, he called them fundamentals. The basic doctrines of Christ. He wanted to go on to deeper things and couldn't because the church wasn't doing its job. So I'm challenging you as your pastor to go be a discipler, to bring them in. Get them where they're not so down here that the church is trying to bring them up while everybody up, while he's up here is getting brought down because they, they can't go. And you're already bringing them in, coming up, and you're, you're helping fill in the gap, and then we can all go even higher together. Amen? Jeremiah 31, 31 through 33, 34. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. Boy, this phone's just jumping all over the place. Eta bye bye. And with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant I made with their fathers, and the day that I took them out of the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I'll put my law in their inward parts, write them in their hearts, and I will be their God. 
they shall be my people, and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord, for I will forgive. And so in other words, they're not going to have to spend all their time trying to get people saved. If we get people saved, now we can go on and grow. God's going to put stuff in their hearts, and I'll remember the sin no more. Psalm 50. Hallelujah. We'll just read the 50th Psalm. I'm going to, I'm going to go, I need to jump on down to John 16, 15. I'm the true vine, verse 1. And my father is a husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it, what, may bring forth more fruit. God wants you to bear fruit, and then he wants to purge you so you're greater and can bear you and handle more. Amen? Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. I am telling you, God wants you to be a fruit bearer. What's wrong with faith in I'm telling you, people, people believe going mad. What's wrong with faith in Victor Church? You. You should have been bearing fruit. Instead of getting mad with me, then I wasn't bearing the fruit that you thought we should have. We have, got, we have got, as believers, to step up to the plate. We're not Mighty Casey. We're Babe Ruth at his last at bat against Boston. I guess it was against, he was, he got traded to Boston. I forgot who he was. Boston traded in New York, and then I'm not sure if he finished with New York, but whatever. His last at bat, he, he went up there and pointed at the fence and hit a home run. Number 714. Told him where it was going. Instead of being mighty Casey and striking out, we need to be pointing at the fence saying, there we're going. We're going up higher. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to bear much fruit in 2017. I'm a fruit bearer. Amen? For without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire. They are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. We're to be his disciples and then go make disciples. Now stop and think about this. How many times have you heard us quote, whatever you ask in my name, I'll do it. And we leave out all the part about bearing fruit on each side of it. I'm telling you. Fruit, one reason people aren't seeing answers to their faith is they're not bearing fruit. Okay, okay. Um, I want Benny and Joe, as we depart this morning, to search the congregation and make sure there's no sticks, knives, or Nerf guns. Because after that statement, I'm going to get in trouble. Hello. We have got to be back to being fruit bearers. You, church... Faith and Victory Church will only grow if you go and win the lost. If you make disciples of men. Well, Pastor, you need to go knock on some doors. You know how effective knocking on doors is? We did it for two years. We had one person show up at the church. And they were already saved. They just decided to start coming to the church. I don't know how many, if, if, how many, if any people got saved knocking on the doors. Oh, you just don't know what you're doing. We had Holy Ghost, tongue-talking, Bible-believing, devil-destroying people knocking on doors. And, if, and in most cases, they wouldn't even open it. And if they did, they weren't interested in talking to you. Because number one, they think you're a Jehovah's Witness. That's the first thing they think. Hello? We need to carry out signs if we ever do it again and say, I'm not a Jehovah's Witness. Hello? We don't have the Watchtower publications, and we, we, you know, we believe Jesus is God, yeah. not a God. Okay? Now, we have got to get back to where we are glorifying the Father by bearing the fruit. Amen? We're bearing fruit, much fruit, and we're making disciples. John Wesley preached a New Year's Eve service every year, and this is what he, 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 here's what he said to the congregation. Commit yourselves to Christ as his servants. Give yourselves to him that you may belong to him. When's the last time you really committed to give yourself to the Lord? Lord, I'll do what you want me to do. I'll say what you want me to say. I'll go where you want me to go. Our churches now are along the, the narrative of how can I come in, get in my spiritual service, and not give any commitment and still feel like I'm going to heaven and had a good time. 
because they had a rock and worship service. The smoke show was amazing. Boy, did you see the light show? Oh, wow. Did you hear the lyrics to that watered-down, wimpy song? <laughs> had a great beat, though. When are we going to come to God? I am clay in the hands of the potter. Mold me, shape me, make me into the vessel you desire for me to be. And whatever vessel that is, I'm happy with it. See, we got so many people who don't want to pray that because they don't like what they think might God might make them. They might be the, they may not be the lead dog. They may not have the pulpit ministry. They may not be in front of everybody. I'm going to tell you right now, there are people right now in front of people who shouldn't be in front of them. There are people on television who shouldn't be on television. There are people writing books who shouldn't be writing books. And yes, they're rich. And I'm going to tell you, there is the thing. You can't serve God and mammon. There are people serving mammon and just hurting the body of Christ in the process. Give yourselves to him that you may belong to him. Christ has many services to be done. Are you here or are you going home? There are many things that the Lord has that need of. And they are not all glorious. Some are more easy and honorable. Well, I'm a charismatic, righteous, faith-confessing, Bible-believing person. I confess that I have a glorious ministry. What if God wants you to have others are more difficult and disgraceful. What do you mean disgraceful? Something nobody else wants to do. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Now we use, we use ministry helps a lot of time, but who wants to be the toilet cleaner? Come on now. You just need to take the Andy Griffith no time for sergeant idea. And if you get toilet bowl duty, them are the most sparkling. I mean, he had it set up where he stepped on that foot pedal and all the, uh, the lids came up at attention. Anybody ever seen No Time for Sergeant? You need, if you haven't seen it, you need to go see it. It's an old Andy Griffith movie, black and white movie. I mean, from way back. It's hilarious. He got, he got toilet bowl duty. The guy was mad when he put him on toilet bowl duty. And I, I honestly believe this is kind of where the idea of a Gomer Powell USMC came from, from that movie. And, uh, but, you know, he, he gave him toilet bowl duty. He's in there with the toothbrush scrubbing the things. I mean, he got it clean. They were sparkling. But who wants to be down there with their face down in the toilet? Whereabouts has been, you know, uh, relieving themselves. Men in the bathroom. I mean, they cover stuff. Hello. Are you here? I don't think men ever stop being little boys. Some of you all get that. If you've cleaned the bathroom, you know what I'm talking about. There are going to be things, in the, I'm just kind of using that, but really honestly, there are going to be things in the body of Christ God needs people to do that are not full of grace and not full of wonder and not full of, you know, splendor. That somebody's got to do. Somebody's got to go hug that stinking, urine-covered, ragtag, homeless person and share Jesus with them. I remember walking down the streets of L.A. one time. We, 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 our kids were with us, and there's this guy leaning up against the wall. You could tell he's, he's, he's just peeing right through his pants. And he's running across the sidewalk. But Jesus died for him. I just want to go minister to the rich. Some are suitable for inclinations, for our inclinations and interest. Others are contrary to both. In some, we may please Christ and please ourselves, but there are other works where we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. It is necessary, therefore, that we consider what it means to be a servant of Christ. Let us, therefore, go to Christ and pray. Amen? Hallelujah. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, 
Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.